Now that we've got the basics down, let's take a look at a screen printing job. This will use three colors, black, blue, and yellow, to create a design for a t-shirt. The design process involves scanning artwork, cleaning up the scanned image, converting the image to vectors, adding text, creating graphics, and selecting the colors. To do this, you will need the computer system, graphics software, and a scanner. Customers often give print shops a rough sketch of what they want. It is your job to turn that sketch into a finished design. The first part of this job is to convert any printed elements of this design into a graphic file that you can use. The easiest way to do this is to scan the image. The scanner works like a copy machine, except that the copy comes out on the computer as a graphics file. Most scanning software automatically senses the edges of the image. It is a good idea to manually expand the scan area a bit to make sure it doesn't chop part of the image. Then we'll set the scanner to black and white, and we'll set the resolution of the scan. The resolution is measured in dots per inch. The higher the resolution, the more dots per inch and the more detailed the scan. But this makes larger file sizes. The Bulldog does not contain any fine detail, so 150 dots per inch should do the job just fine. The scanning software also allows you to mirror the image or invert the colors. In this case, it swaps black and white areas, creating the effect of a photo negative. When everything is set, you can scan the image. The scanned image comes out as a bitmap or raster file. This saves the image as a pattern of dots, in this case, are 150 dots per inch. Zooming in on the image, you can see the individual dots, called pixels. Scanning often drops some of the pixels out of the image and adds others where they don't belong. So the next order of business is to clean up the image. Zoom in on the area, select the pencil tool, and fill in any areas that need it. Then remove any stray pixels in the white areas. After cleaning up the image, do an auto trace. This converts the image into a vector based drawing. Vectors are lines and curves instead of individual dots. No matter how close you zoom in, the image stays clean. We're using a program called Streamline to do this. Then, save it as a file that can be opened in the graphics program. We'll paste the scan into the template with the registration marks. Open the file with the registration marks, then the file of the dog. Copy the scan of the dog. Close the file then paste into the template. Then save the file with the new name. Let's change the Bulldog's appearance by moving some of the curves. Moving his eyebrows gives him a tougher look. Next, we'll give him some big floppy ears. These are Bezier curves, so you can use the handles to change the shape of any of the lines. This is the fun part. Now give him some teeth.
Finally, let's put some real spikes on his collar. Now there's a dog you wouldn't want to meet in a dark alley. Okay, enough play. This isn't what the customer wanted, so we'll go back to our original design and get back to work. The revert command removes all of the changes made since the last time the image was saved. Well, the bulldog is in pretty good shape now, so we'll move him out of the way and work on the text. The text is a script font that follows a curve. The easiest way to make the curve is to draw an ellipse. Think of an ellipse as a stretched circle, just like a rectangle is a stretched square. The text tool has a special option to type on a path. Just type in the text, next, set the size, and position then select the font the drawing calls for a long tail that underlines the word the best way to create this is to use the bezier line tool it helps to zoom in tight it also helps to remove the fill for now, so that we're just working with the outline of the tail. We need to just get it in close to the design. Then edit the curves for the exact shape. With the tail filled, it's easy to move the control points and handles to fine-tune the shape. The design calls for a hollowed-out area where the G drops into the tail. The software has a scissors tool to cut into the curve. By cutting it into two places and then removing the part that went across the G, we're ready to make the hollowed-out section. Illustrator allows you to simply add points to the end of the curve and add to it. A few shape adjustments. And we're ready to move on to the next part of the design. Finally, there's a line where the tail connects to the end of the letter S. We'll join the tail with the S to make a smooth transition. Let's give it a black fill for now to see how it looks. Now we're ready to work with the dog a little more. The design calls for a circle around the dog. We'll get the dog close to the rough scale relative to the text, then draw our circles. It may take some adjustment to get them just right. At this point, the circles have no fill, so the tail shows up inside them. To fix this, the circles need a white fill. Since they were drawn last, they appear on top of the dog. Most drawing programs allow you to change this order. Just send the circle to the back and the dog's face shows up. Then do the same with the next circle. Since you sent the circles to the back, now the tail shows up in front of them. So it needs to be sent to the back. Now that the tail is in the back, then the large circle, then the small circle, and then the dog. This is what we need. The final part of the drawing is the northwest text. It follows a curve that fits inside the tail. This will be easier in the outline view. First, give it a path to follow.
Select the font and size. Type in the text. And then arrange it to fit inside the tail. If the text was created with no fill or a black fill, it won't show up against the black background of the tail when you switch to the preview mode. Just change the fill to white and there it is. Adding this text could have been done in several ways. For example, you could have typed the text first and then set the font size. Now you're ready to add a little color to the design. The school colors are blue and yellow. You could use the Pantone menu, but it'll be easier to use the swatch menu. Swatches are preset colors, each identified with a name. For this job, we'll use Hawaiian blue for the Bulldog's text and tail. And pure yellow for the Northwest and the Bulldog face. Then we'll give the design a black outline. To make the bulldog text flow better, we need to get rid of those lines between the individual letters. The Pathfinder menu has an outline tool that does this nicely. Oops, this moved the tail back in front of the dog, so we need to use the Arrange menu to move the tail to the back of the drawing again. Now we're ready to print out our color separations.